Hey what's happening guys, Chris here, and today we're going to be checking out the MG15NA in Battlefield 1, which is a primary weapon for the support class. So back in the year of 1916, the Great War was in full swing, and the Battle of Somme had begun, pitting the Germans against the English and the French in one of the bloodiest fights in all of history. The German Empire desperately needed a weapon to counter the Lewis guns used by the British, as at the time, they just didn't have anything similar to fill in the LMG role apart from some Madsen machine guns. Enter the MG15NA, which played out as a bit of a gap filler weapon for the German army. Well, up until the more popular 0815 machine guns were used anyway. The Bergmann model 1915NA, with the NA standing for Neue Art, or new model in English, was a redesigned version of an older, heavy, water-cooled weapon, which was later made to be more infantry and aircraft friendly. After the German army suffered a huge amount of losses on the Somme battlegrounds, up to 6,000 MG15s were ordered, which were issued to infantry battalions. Though when the more dominant 0815 machine guns took over later on in the war, the MG15 became a bit of a forgotten weapon. Although it was lighter, it wasn't exactly very reliable, with the gun suffering from overheating issues, and so having the MG15 as an aircraft weapon made quite a lot of sense, as the cold air high in the sky would help to cool the mechanism to help prevent this overheating problem. With the gun seeing action both in the air and on the land, the weapon helped to meet demands for a German LMG, though with it being overshadowed by the more famous 0815 machine gun, it was quickly phased out and died an early death by the end of the war. Production of the gun stopped in 1918, and by the time World War II came along, the MG15NA was merely an abandoned piece of technology, which remained to be buried in the past. In Battlefield 1, three variants of the MG15NA can be equipped on a support loadout, with these being the Low Weight, Storm and Suppressive, which I'll be talking more about and comparing later on. But anyway, damage wise, the gun boasts a maximum of 23 up to 11 meters, which will drop down over distance to 17.5 beyond 42 meters, and so it shares the same damage model as the Madsen machine gun, being able to kill a fully healed enemy in 5 to 6 bullets. This is one less bullet at range than both the Lewis gun and the Hewitt automatic, though it's practically the same amount as the Browning M1918 and the Bernay Massey. Firing at 500 RPM, this puts the gun near the middle of the support weapons when comparing rates for fire. It's not going to cut through your enemies like the Browning rifle would in CQC, but it's still going to have a slight edge over the other slower firing LMGs in head-to-head -head battles. Though I should point out that the gun can overheat when you're firing in one continuous stream for too long so just remember to ease off the trigger whenever you hear it starting to slow down. Now fire rate and damage output might not seem like anything out of the ordinary, though something that completely outshines every other gun is its ability to hold an absolute shit ton of ammo. Having a 100 round belt is easily the best factor about using the MG15, and being able to hold down the trigger and watch the bullets fly without worrying about running out of ammo is quite often a godsend. Having ammunition available to fire most of the time will allow you to deal with multiple enemies one after the other, though should you eventually run out of ammo, it's going to take around about 4.5 seconds to reload, which albeit isn't ridiculously long, but still enough to get you killed if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Now moving over from the strongest to the weakest element of the gun, which has got to be its accuracy. It's okay having 100 rounds to shoot at your enemy, but if those bullets aren't going where you want them to, then it's probably going to take more of them to get the job done. The MG15 is notorious for its low accuracy, with its recoil pattern having an upwards kick of 0.33 and a horizontal value of 0.35. So it's quite controllable, but that horizontal jolting is definitely going to push the gun around, more than you'll probably like it to, causing quite a few shots to miss. The MG15 has a pretty large bullet spread penalty whilst on the move too, which is going to contribute to this lack of accuracy, so just remember that standing still will usually help to increase the chances of your shots landing where you want them to. Despite all of this though, the MG15 actually has the quickest muzzle velocity of all of the support weapons, shooting each round at a speed of 870 meters per second. So at least you won't have to lead your target's movements very much, as those bullets are going to travel pretty quickly through the air. Looking at the variants, the low weight model offers a few recoil recovery advantages, such as a 67% faster recoil decrease, a 200% quicker recovery rate from hip fire, along with it having slightly less spread increase per shot too. These buffs are all going to give you an advantage when tap and burst firing the gun, 
and because the sights are going to reset faster, this will allow you to be more accurate when you stop shooting and start again. With the inclusion of a bipod, this makes it a great variant for planting down to take out opponents in the distance, with that higher muzzle velocity and with that much reduced recoil and spread whilst in a stationary position. The Storm variant on the other hand has its bonuses applied to its overall recoil pattern. With a vertical value of 0.231 and a horizontal value of 0.245, this drops the MG15's recoil down by 30%, making it much more accurate and stable, directly countering one of the weakest factors that the gun has. The Storm variant might be more of a suitable option for rushing objectives and getting into the thick of the action. It still might not be as accurate as some of the other LMGs, but those added bonuses are going to help you stay on target and make the gun generally more reliable when running and gunning. But lastly, if you really hate having to reload, then the MG15 Suppressive will probably be the ideal weapon for you. Doubling up its already hefty ammo capacity to a massive 200 rounds, reloading is probably going to be the last thing on your mind. This is an insane amount of bullets, and because it's coupled up with a bipod and some optics too, you can simply just sit back and hold down objectives, confidently blaze through your ammo, and pick off each enemy one by one, if you'd like to. 200 rounds is definitely enough to keep you going for a while, and it's no big deal if some of your shots miss, because you'll have plenty more in your reserves to back you up. So the MG15 NA is the ultimate suppressive LMG, as it can continuously lay down fire and reliably drop bodies left, right and center without breaking a sweat. Its huge ammo capacity is going to keep you going through the fight, allowing you to mow down multiple enemies one after the other. Though that violent recoil pattern will often force quite a few of your shots off target as you open fire. Down to the gun having a speedy muzzle velocity, this means that bullet travel time shouldn't be much of an issue, and when combined with a bipod, you can actually tame the beast and provide effective supportive fire over distance fairly well. So that's basically it for this one guys, hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe for loads more content. Thanks for watching, and I'll be seeing you in our next one.